you doing? Ruined Man here. Hey, today's serious topic, and I've never heard this discussed. I found this article online. I was looking for it. I knew it was true, and I couldn't find anything about it, but I finally found this one on ABC News. Uh, basically, that automation, okay, I've talked about artificial intelligence before, and I'm quite interested in the topic. Uh, I think it's inevitable. It's either going to be uh, developed uh, in the West, in the U.S., in Europe, or it's going to be developed in China. Well, actually, it's both in, uh, what am I saying? It's both, right? It's, it's in both China and the U.S. But the race or the ultimate winner is going to be in one or the other. And the reason why I say that, it's like, it's very similar to Facebook and Google. Artificial intelligence is one of these, it's one of these winner-take-all technologies. Because once you're ahead in intelligence, you just keep getting farther ahead, right? And so, you know, you don't, the other person doesn't catch up because it's self-learning. So it learns, it, it, it goes to one thing and then it, it, you know, it just keeps going up and up and up and up, right? And the speed gets faster and faster also. So uh, it's a very, it's a very serious topic. Very, it has to be tackled in another uh, maybe podcast I can talk about who's going to win, who I think is going to win and why and, and the, the, the consequences of who wins. But in this, this podcast, I just want to talk real quick about whose jobs are going to be lost. And this is something I never, I never see anybody talking about. Like there's going to be, okay, we know that jobs are going to be automated, right? Jobs are going to be lost. There's going to be more robots. We're seeing it. If you go to McDonald's, a lot of McDonald's have automatic, you know, order taking like iPads where you can just order your food. Uh, you're seeing more and more, obviously, uh, Wall Street traders are just, you know, a, a computer, an AI can make a decision within three hundredths of a second about which stock to buy. And it can crunch like a thousand million times more data to make that decision. So men not only cannot compete with robots, but there's not even a chance they ever could in the future. Like there's no chance. It's the, the robot is so much better and it's so much faster. And also it also takes in so much more data. You know, there's no chance that man is going to suddenly get, you know, a, a million times smarter, a million times faster neurons. You know, uh, maybe there'll be some technology in the future, like a robot or some kind of a chip that can be implemented in the, in, in the human mind that can kind of speed it up, but nothing's going to ever be faster than plain old computers, artificial intelligence, right? Algorithms. And so they, a lot of the jobs are never coming back, you know? And so who loses those jobs? It's a big deal. It's not a small thing. And what no one's talking about is that most of the jobs lost are going to be men. Uh, and you can just see right here. It's, it's, it made perfect sense to me. I was thinking about it the other day. I just like suddenly realized that nobody's talking about that men are going to lose their jobs first because of artificial intelligence. Okay, so here we go. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a documentary there, which is not really related to this argu uh, article, so I'm not going to... I watched it. It was quite good, actually. It got me interested, but uh, it's not exactly... Uh, you know how they put videos sometimes now, and it's not really related to the article? I don't like that. I want to see something. If they, they have a video, I want to see it specifically about this article, right? Otherwise, I don't want to waste my time watching some random video, right? Especially autoplay drives me mad. But okay, so basically men's jobs are easier to automate than women's jobs. New analysis shows, and it's partly because women are more likely to work basically with people, right? So interpersonal creative decision, that's what they call it. But basically it's with people. So th this is not a good, they're not doing a good job explaining it. There's There's two things. There's things and people, right? Men tend to gravitate towards things. So fixing engines, you know, numbers, math, and, and women tend to uh, go towards things like teaching. You know, 70% of teachers are female, right? And childcare, you know, it's not a thing. There's no thing. There's a person. You're, you're teaching a person, right? So, but the problem is, the problem is, is that the jobs that are going to be automated first are all things. They're not people. That's the hardest thing to automate. It's very difficult to automate a babysitter. How could you automate a babysitter? It would require much more intelligence than we've ever uh, imagined a computer could have. I'm sure some point in the future, but not right now. And look at the look at let's look at the look at the types of data, types of jobs. So on the right you have the susceptible to automation, and then on the, going up you have the lowest down there with office and practice managers. That's a 
mostly women down on the bottom, and then you get a higher percentage of job. Men gets up to 100%, almost 100% when you're at construction and mining, truck drivers, delivery drivers, ICT managers, even food trade is up there about 70, almost 70%. Horticultural trade workers, so gardeners, uh, almost all men. And then, uh, then you're down at uh, just over 50 with packaging and things like that. Um, and on the right, you have things that are easy to automate. So food prep, they already have hamburger AI that can make hamburgers and it makes them perfectly. Like it just never goes a little bit, cooks a little bit too much. It flips it over just at the right time, puts the cheese on the hamburger, the cheeseburger just at the right time to melt it just right, you know, and flips the buns over and all that. All this food prep stuff, pretty damn easy uh, for, uh, we're talking about fast food. We're not talking about high end. Uh, we're not talking about five, seven star hotels. We're talking about McDonald's, KFC, you know, work like that is easy to uh, automate, right? So basically guys are up at the top and the, 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 of these jobs that can be automated, right? So what's gonna happen? There's a few jobs that women are, you know, pretty high, but like less, like for example, women are in midwives, nursing, hairdresser, you know, those are not easy to do. Those are, you can't automate those jobs. It's very difficult, right? And people don't even want them to be automated, really. Like, do you want to stick your head into some AI that's going to cut your hair? I mean, in a cartoon you do, right, where it comes out perfect, but not, not in real life where it's going to come out and it's going to cut your head with a knife, you know, like that you don't want, right? You want a human being with controlling the, the blades, right? Being careful, right? looking listening to you what, what kind of haircut do you want right you know getting your complex explanation of yourself or maybe showing an old picture of yourself i want a haircut like this right a computer has difficulty with that right so ai algorithms very very difficult for them to understand these type of things they're getting better but you know obviously our automation and just like just you know very similar to automation in the old days in the 1900s in the industrial revolution it started with the simple things and actually started with men's work then too, which no one talks about. But now now we're looking at, there's a few jobs at women, food prep, cleaning, clothing, uh, like factories, hospitality. Some of that can be automated, right? Customer service, you know, you can go up to a iPad and get questions answered. Uh, you could chat bot can answer some of your, uh, you know, kind of call center questions, things like that, keyboard operators. These can be automated, but most by and large, the jobs we're going to lose here are men's jobs first. Uh, there's 2 million Australian, this is an Australian study, uh, 2 million Australian men working in jobs where more than half of the job is at risk of automation. Okay? There's, that's only 750,000 women in those positions. So it's, it's, it's uh, almost triple. Men going to get automated, uh, labor and construction, mining, uh, these these jobs are just going to go, you know, Rio Tinto, these 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 drilling. I mean, you know, there was there used to be there was a um, what was that one? Not Paul Bunyan. There was an old story that that a mining story when the first steam uh, mining machine, you know, diggery machine basically came out and it was him versus I can't remember the name of the guy right now, but it's a great story. Actually, it was and it, it really that story really, I, I, I should really find it. Uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, I'll put it below. I'll put it below. But basically what it is is there was a very strong miner. He was incredible. He had two hammers. He could, he could, he could, you know, he could cut through, go through the stone like a madman. You know, he worked like 10 men, you know, and then there was the steam uh, uh, mining machine and it was him versus the machine. And then uh, he beat the machine, but then he died. And then at the end, and uh, in this uh, this tale, and then the machine just they just lined it up for the next tunnel and just went through the next tunnel, next tunnel, next tunnel, and and that was the that was the end of guys digging t mines. You know, it was the beginning of 100% automation of mines, right? And it was like a struggle for humanity. Like my 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 relatives were in mining in iron ore up in Minnesota, so I heard this story when I was a little kid. You know, because. It was like there was a there was a sadness, there was a loss that that men were losing their jobs, you know, to these machines, and it was a difficult thing. And I think this is where we're at right now. 
we're in a situation where men are going to lose their jobs. Drivers, all men. Truck drivers, these are the first to go. Everyone talks about self-driving cars, right? And I don't think there's any way to stop it. So just so you know where I'm coming from. It's either going to be a Chinese algorithm. It's going to be American. It's going to be German. It's coming. It's going to be Japanese. The algorithm's coming. And we're going to have, um, you know, driving jobs are going to be toast. And it'll be safer too. Less drunk drivers. I mean, what am I saying? No drunk drivers. And a lot less accidents. And so I think for humanity, I think it's going to be a good thing. Okay? That's my take on it. But whether you think it's a good or bad thing, whichever, it doesn't really matter in, that, in the sense that guys are going to lose their jobs. And what are they going to do? And who's going to help them? Who's going to be there for all the guys that are losing their jobs for driving? It's all guys. guys. You know, driving is truck driving. Go look at the truck drivers, right? How many women out there? It's, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's very, very low. It was up near 100 in the, uh, the, the, the Australian uh, chart there above. Uh, so, okay, so they're talking about women's jobs, child care, education, uh, clerks, hairdressers. Uh, very difficult to automate, whereas electricians... Uh, you know, it's only 1.3% women, automobile mechanics, 1.2%, fabricating engineers, 1%, plumbers, less than 1%, bricklayers, carpenters, and joiners, 0.8%, right? So, you know, these jobs are all men, okay? They're all men. And 3D printing houses, if you search 3D printing house on YouTube, you can watch videos of, of um, pretty amazing uh, 3D printers that can print houses and they can print them. Actually, this is the problem. It's not just, it's just like the trader, the, the AI that trades stocks. It's not just cheaper. It's actually better because the AI can print a honeycomb wall with a very complex inner uh, structure that is much better for insulation without using any insulation at all, just using space and printing. And so, you know, they can do a very, very complex printing wall. It looks like a regular wall, but inside it's honeycomb. And that will keep you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And also these, these printing, these uh, 3D house printing, they also print the house with the windows in there, with, hole, with perfect holes for the elect electrical to go in, with perfect, you know, wherever you want your, your electric plugs. They just print it out. And, you know, to make it even worse, a 3D printed house, in the very near future, we're going to get a 3D printed house up on 99designs. There's going to be people making 3D printed house. You can just download the, the, the blueprint and you can have it printed up in your, in your, um, on your land. And it could be any shape you want, basically. And you can have a very unique house, right? And also, you're going to have designers, like we saw with 99designs, we saw some really excellent designers step up and make some super, super uh, designs. And that's what we're gonna have. We'll have safer buildings, better for earthquakes, made faster, uh, you know, more secure, less expensive materials, right? Uh, you know, like I said, warmer in winter, cooler in summer, uh, you know, safer, you know, lighter, cheaper. Basically, man can't compete, okay? So that's, that's what we're dealing with here. We're not dealing with a guy who can work harder and can catch up, right? He can work harder, make a better house. These 3D printed house, and, and pretty soon 3D printed skyscrapers, one floor at a time, gonna be very strong. They're gonna be very secure. And I predict at some point in the near future that we won't even have, like at this point right now, you need the city to approve your design, like it's safe enough for an earthquake. But I, th I predict that there's gonna be a point in, in, in 3D printing when they won't even have that anymore because all the buildings will be strong enough. You know, it's kind of like if you make a container for a for shipping, nobody checks it to see if it's strong because they just know the design of them are strong. They're all strong, right? None of them fall down in earthquakes. A, a container, if you make a house out of a container, it's not going to fall down, right? In fact, if a tree falls on it, you're probably going to be safe, right? It's the only house that's safe from a tree, pretty much, because they're so damn strong containers. And these new 3D printed houses are not only going to be flexible, fast, cheap, better to live in, better lighting, all that, better for earthquakes, but they're, they're just going to be, you know, they're going to be strong. And, you know, there's just there a lot of the things that we needed until now are not going to be needed. So the job of the guy who goes in and, you know, the architect who checks out if it's earthquake, uh, you know, proof and everything, he's going to be gone too, because it's not going to be needed because the, the houses will be so strong, right? So 
we don't uh, we don't um, uh, need that kind of oversight in the case of extremely strong houses made out of graphene material, right? Graphene is so strong that you can, uh, an elephant can stand on the top of a pencil on a one atom thick sheet, one atom. I mean, you can't even see in it. I mean, obviously you can't see an atom. It's so thin, you can't even see it sideways. It's invisible to the human eye and, and by, a, by a long shot. And, and an elephant could stand on that on a pencil on one atom thick sheet and it would not go through. That's how strong graphene is. And graphene is also cheap. It's made out of pure carbon. So it's one of the, it's the most abundant material in the universe, right? Carbon. And so very cheap to make. So when they start 3D printing houses, literally these things are going to be so strong that you could drop, you know, like a, the, 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 the World Trade Center could fall on them and they're going to be fine. You know, we're talking about amazing new materials coming out. Men are making amazing things every day. Technology is moving forward, right? The problem is this technology boomerangs back on guys, right? It boomerangs and takes their job. And that's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening is guys are creating stuff and ruining their own jobs. And the thing is, is the worst part that I can see is that it can't be stopped. Because if, let's say that America said no more of this garbage, no more automation, no more artificial intelligence, it's just going to continue and it, we will be basically run by the Chinese or the Japanese or the Germans because that's the way it's going to be. And if you're, if you're Japanese, it's exact same thing. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it and they're going to come and take over the Japanese market. That's why it's a race. That's why it's winner take all. That's why everybody's going for it right now. So there's no way to stop it. The horse is out of the barn as far as automation and the loss of jobs in the future. But the question is, who's going to own the technology, right? So I'm not saying we stop this. I'm just saying like the reality is guys are going to lose their jobs. So already we have, you know, more women graduating from university, right? And they're going into jobs that are the least likely to be automated. So in, and, and automation is coming really fast, you guys. It ain't, this ain't, we're not talking 20 years down the road. This is not like, you know, like popular science magazine from like, you know what I mean? In the sixties where they had these flying cars. No, this is like happening really fast. It's being implemented insanely fast all over the world. And it's not one, it's not Silicon Valley. It's, it's, it's Beijing, it's Shenzhen, you know, it's Tokyo, it's uh, Berlin. It's happening all over the world. Israel is going crazy with this stuff. You know, this is happening so fast and in unpredictable places. It's the whole thing is just, it's just going forward. It's, it's actually going forward so fast that it, the human mind can't really comprehend it because it's from so many places and angles. No matter how much you know about AI in one area or, you know, these kind of 3D printing and all these technologies that are going to automate jobs, you can't know everything, right? There's some other guy making some whole new thing with a whole new material that you never even imagined could happen that's going to totally destroy jobs in another area, right? So, you know, it's just, it's just happening all over, whether it's weather prediction, you know, you know, like just, it's just, it's just going and it's going fast. So what are guys going to do? Guys, you got to start saving your money. Stop giving your money away to people, right? Women, you know, you got to, you got to hunker down basically as a guy. This is my advice. My advice is to hunker down and get serious about protecting yourself. You know, when it comes to this kind of stuff and you, you, so you want to have money, right? And you want to start thinking about what's going to happen very, very soon. The, the worst thing is to be like the post office where you don't change until it's too late. Now the post office was saved by the internet in the end by pure, pure luck, right? Because uh, I Amazon, right? But you don't want your future based on pure luck, right? You might win on pure luck, right? Some guy fell out of a hell uh, out of a uh, airplane and he lived with only like two broken arms and a broken hip. He landed on the perfect size branch of a tree. It broke his fall just enough, save his life, hit the ground. But, you know, you don't want to be falling out of a plane basing your, your uh, survival on pure luck and the fact that you're one in a billion that would, this would happen to, right? So think of the future. Think of the jobs that are being automated. I don't think there's one piece of advice, okay? Like, you know, plan a career that will never be automated. What I would recommend is to have as one of your hobbies, okay, I talked about the man cave before, where you're just like, you know, you're sitting there getting drunk, watching, you know, football and smoking a cigar. 
I would stop that kind of stuff and I would take that energy, take that curiosity that you have about sports and all this other stuff, take that and start to funnel that towards learning about new technologies and just kind of the trends of things. You don't have to be a programmer to see a trend. You know, I remember when I moved to Japan, I'll tell you how I decided it. I was looking, I, mean, I was studying business at the time, but I also would look at Time Magazine because back then there was no internet. Time Magazine, Newsweek Magazine were like the big thing to read. And I would look at the cover of Newsweek and Time and they had Japan on there more and more and more. And I said, holy moly, I'm moving to Japan. And that's what I did. And then I started seeing China. China, 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 right? I moved to China, right? So the thing is, is these trends, you don't have to be in any special person. You don't have to be like a special skill. You don't need to be a mathematician, uh, you know, like Richard Feynman. You don't have to be a, a, you know, a claim scientist, right? You know what I mean? You don't have to be a genius to see something and move in that direction. So what I would say to guys is, is to you is there's, here's why you should study artificial intelligence, all these new technologies and keep your curiosity is, is one, cause it's good for you. Okay. It's just very good for your brain learning things instead of, instead of like gossip and, and, and what, you know what I mean? Like talking about people and like religion, like all this stuff, like learn about the world that we live in, the physics of the world we live in, what's going on in this world. You know, what, what is possible? What are people doing? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? How can I get involved? What, what, you know, learning this stuff and, and improving yourself all the time. And then that knowledge, that general knowledge, it's like a, your brain is like a bunch of neurons interconnected in very complex uh, form. Like they're just super, super complex interconnected, right? Those interconnections, those, those neural connections, those are all the things you learn. You're creating neural connections in your mind in your brain. That's why an older guy who has more experience tends to have, he's got more interconnected neural connections, right? And that's why sometimes an older guy who's like quite old can think of a solution to a problem quicker than a young guy because he doesn't have those connections. So he's, his brain is very fast, but he doesn't have that experience as creating those connections. So you want to build those connections if you're a young guy. And if you're an older guy, you want to make sure that you stay on the cutting edge because you don't want to go down the tiresome road of just the road to death, you know what I mean? Like slowing down and fucking dying, fuck that, right? You wanna be always like up for things, always what's going on, what's the latest thing? I can do it, you know, what, what do I need to learn now? What's going on, you know? Maybe I can't do this, right? Maybe I won't be an AI programmer, right? But maybe if I understand where it's going in my industry, maybe I can join a company that is leading in that direction. And that will, you know, a rising, you know, tide lifts all boats. So if I'm in a company that's going up, right, you could have been, you know, there was a uh, secretary who became a millionaire at Cisco in Japan. And the reason is she got a little bit of stock when she first joined. And that stock ended up being very valuable. So you don't have to be the CEO to become a millionaire. You need, you just need to be on the right boat, right, in the right direction and negotiate some pretty good terms. Now, I'm not a big worker for companies. I don't wanna have a job, but a lot of guys do, I know. So pick companies wisely and you learn, how you do that is by learning what's going on in the future and what is dangerous, what is changing. Because I tell you something right now, guys, anybody listening to this, is if you see all these jobs disappearing, all these companies, plumbers, bricklayers, carpenters, engineering, fabrication, automotive technicians, electricians, mechanics, you know, glaziers, plasters, tilers, you know, construction, mining, vehicle, parts makers, right? Trimmers, painters, these jobs are disappearing, right? So what are you hearing? You're probably hearing like there's no hope. What I'm saying, now I'm taking at the end of this, I'm going in the other direction. I'm saying, hey, guess what? If you see the trend, some company is gonna be doing all these services. Somebody company is gonna have a new technology doing construction doing panels, doing vehicle parts, right? Painting, right? Electricians, all the things that are disappearing as an individual job, plumbers, booklayers, but they're going to be reproduced with a company that's going to be automating them. And that's the direction you want to go in. If you have the experience in the industry, right? You have the knowledge that will give you that leg up to get into that company. And I would take it, whether you're starting a company or whether you're joining a company, you, you take your experience, you have the knowledge of the basic, uh, 
you know, industry. You have, you know, the clients, they know you, they trust you, right? So you're in a perfect position, especially for sales is to go in and say, Hey, don't use all these people. We can automate this and we can do it cheaper, safer, better, faster, whatever. Right? So there is hope. So don't lose hope guys. The reason why there's hope is because you're smart. You're sitting here studying, you're taking your time. You're not just watching a replay of, you know, some game, some baseball game, you know, you're, you're actually learning things that are good for you, right? So take your knowledge guys. It's coming. Automation is coming. It's going to hit guys the hardest. And, uh, you know, we're just going to be, guys are going to be screwed, but it doesn't have to be you that I'm going to put this link below because there's a lot of good information here. Uh, but, uh, you don't have to be, it doesn't, this article doesn't talk about what you should do, which is what I just talked about. Take your knowledge, move into the companies that are leading the industry in these new fields, which are automating. Do not, okay, go into depression and it's no hope and no one's going to, all these jobs are going to be done. Houses are going to be made. They're going to be made better and safer, less flammable and stronger and more creative and better lighting and cheaper materials. You know, all these things are going to happen. And how are you going to feel when you're working there, right? When you're bringing these things, you know, every time there's an earthquake in China and Japan, uh, there's tons of people die. The reason why is because construction is quite old. The way that we make houses is very, very old. It's not the greatest thing. All you guys doing your hard work, it was the best. It brought humanity from, you know, being monkeys and animals up to the level of technology that we have now. But it's not going to take us to the next level. So you've got to be flexible, right? Give yourself a pat on the back. Look at guys. Give them, you know, we brought humanity to this level. But now, you know, in a sense, you got to be a traitor to the old ways because you see the direction and someone's going to do it. And you want to be on that board so that you're taking so that you have a say so, not just make money. You might have plenty of money, but you want to have a say so. You want to be part of the stream of life. You know, you don't want to be on the outside of life feeling like, you know, you can't do it anymore. You, you're not part of it, right? Fuck that. No, you can do it. You don't need to be Elon Musk to be a, in a cutting edge company and leading the way. Now, other people are going to get hurt. That's absolutely true. And it is a bit of evolution, you know, and it is very, very sad and unfair that the hardest jobs, the ones that guys are doing are going to get fucked the most. But I'm telling you right now, that's the way it's going to go down and you need to protect yourself and keep learning, keep growing. And I'm out of here because I got to go uh, taking my mom around. She's still here for a few more days in Bangkok. So thanks you guys so much for uh, listening. Thanks for your comments. Fucking love them. Uh, anybody coming to the conference, hit me up at Ronan MGTOW. Uh, at gmail.com and that's coming up uh, December 8th, 9th and 10th. It's going to be super fun. We're getting some really good guys to come. Uh, like I said, you can crash in my place. You can get a place for $9 a night nearby. It's Bangkok's very easy to visit. You just need a passport and uh, the will to get together with a bunch of other cool guys. Your anonymity is going to be protected. My anonymity is going to be protected. We're going to be sharing ideas. We're going to be learning. Anybody who's got a MGTOW channel, we totally would love you to come. I want you to come in. Everybody bring in the ideas. And we're going to hope this is the beginning of a, a long-term trend of guys helping guys in person, right? Which is, which is different than online. It's more personal. You know, and I hope that I hope that uh, leads to good things. Right. And I think it will. I think I think guys are going to really be help. I think it's going to be awesome, actually. You know, so. All right, guys. So thanks. Have a good one. And I hope you um, I hope you uh, learned something from this, because for me, this is like key stuff, man. This is whoo, man. AI is going to screw guys. Don't let it be you. All right. Ronan Man signing off.